Okay. So thank you very much. Next up, we have Willis Colley. Mr. Willis Colley is the Chief Human Capital Officer for the USDA Research Education and Economics Mission Area, where he provides for and formulates both short and long range human resource management planning, policy direction, technical guidance, and operational support. So thank you. I turn it over to you, Willis. Thank you, Tara. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. We appreciate you joining us this afternoon, and we appreciate you staying with us for the whole session. I know that two hours can be a long time to sit in your seat and listen to a computer screen, but um, we're really glad that you were able to join us and hear about the opportunities at the Economic Research Service from Dr. Weinberg. Mm -hmm. And just recently, the opportunities at the National Institute in Food and Agriculture from um, Dr. Engel. What we're going to do now is talk to you a little bit about how to apply for a federal job. And a lot of the advice and information that we're going to give you this afternoon will apply to any federal job that you're looking to apply to. Uh, we're going to be focusing primarily on ERS and NIFA jobs today, but uh, the process is pretty much the same for all federal jobs. So we're going to talk about the process itself. We're going to show you how to create a profile in the USA Jobs uh, website, how to build and upload a resume, how to search for jobs, submit an application, and then we're going to talk a little bit about different types of announcements and um, closing dates that they may have. So the database for all federal employment is usajobs.gov. I imagine that you've been there already. Um, many, many people have already searched the site, but if you haven't, please um, save that among your favorites in your browser, usajobs.gov. Um, all federal agencies are required to announce their uh, competitive positions on USA Jobs. There are about 500 different agencies and organizations that post jobs on that site. So far, about 10 million people have gone in and created accounts. They are, there are opportunities posted worldwide, um, 147 countries most recently. And on an annual basis, it's anywhere between 400 and 500,000 jobs. So imagine that, almost a half million jobs announced in USA Jobs. So the federal application process, um, starts with really creating a job profile for yourself, a profile for yourself in USA Jobs, then searching for a job, reviewing the job announcement, deciding if you feel like you qualify and it's something that you're interested in, and then preparing the application online in USA Jobs. You will submit that to the agency, and then at that point it transitions to the agency. The agency will review the application, will decide which candidates they wish to interview. After the interview process, they'll check reference and then make final selections, and then you receive a job offer. So um, the ideal time frame from start to finish is, is 80 days. Um, that can change depending on certain jobs and certain situations, but the goal that the Office of Personnel Management, OPM, sets for all federal agencies is an 80-day hiring timeline. So we'll talk more about the timeline as we move forward. The first part we're gonna talk about is creating your profile in USA Jobs. When you log into the USA Jobs website, you see right there in the center of the page, the arrow pointing to the create profile. Creating the profile allows you to save jobs that you find that you are really interested in applying uh, to. It also allows you to save job searches, which is a really cool feature um, so that you'll be notified about jobs as they come online. And then it also allows you to manage everything that you need to complete your application online. So your resume, your cover letter, your transcripts, any other documents that you need, you can all manage right through your USA Jobs profile. So when you click on create profile on the previous screen, it takes you to this screen. And if you already have an email address and password, 
where you have previously created a profile, you would simply enter that here and click sign in. If this is your first time and you're creating an account, you would click on the create an account button, which is located right below the sign in. And then when you create that, it will ask you for detailed contact information, your citizenship status, your work experience, and it also allows you to select certain preferences about job opportunities that you would be interested in. The next part we're gonna talk about is how you actually build and store your resume in your USA Jobs profile. So once again, you sign into your USA Jobs account. You must have an account before you can create and upload a resume. And then you go to the, the um, option that says upload or build resume. So it lets you upload up to five different resumes. So if you already have one that you've used that's been successful and you wanna keep using that one, you can upload that resume or you can fill out the fields in USA Jobs and it will create a resume for you. One piece of advice is that a federal resume is often requires, often requires more information than a standard general resume. Um, if you're not sure what to include in a federal resume, I strongly recommend that you use the build a resume feature in USA Jobs because it will prompt you for all of the information that it needs and you can be assured that you have a complete federal resume if you do it online. Um, remember, there are a few things you should not do ever when uploading documents to USA Jobs. Um, you don't want to include your social security number on your resume. You don't want to include photographs of yourself on your resume. You don't want there to be any classified or sensitive government information. You wanna be careful not to um, put affiliations such as your age, your gender, your religious affiliation, anything like that on your resume. After you create uh, the, the resume uh, or the contact information on the resume, it starts to ask you about your work experience. And this is where you'll see the differences between a normal resume and a federal resume. Um, so it asks you for your, the name of your employer, the job title, the address of the employer, the date, so the month and year that you started the position and the month and year that you ended the position. It also wants to know the salary that you made. Um, so you can put in an hourly rate, a biweekly rate, a monthly rate, an annual rate, um, and then you indicate how many hours per week that you worked. Another really important feature is the, may we contact your supervisor? Um, oftentimes when people are checking references, they'll call a supervisor, but they also, they always want to do so with the um, understanding that the candidate has given permission for them to do so. So the, may we contact your supervisor? You can say yes, no, or contact me first. Um, a lot of times, you know, you, you aren't quite ready to tell someone that you're applying for a job, and so you just want them to contact you first to give the go-ahead. And then at the bottom, under duties, accomplishments, and related skills, you should be very specific about what you did in that job, and then save the work experience for that particular job. Then you click the next button to go to the next work experience field. When you're finished with all of your work experience, and be sure to include all of the jobs that, that, will, uh, that you wish to share for the position that you're applying for, um, you want to input your education. Um, this screen allows you to put in the name of the university that you attended, your major or minor, um, what GPA you had, total credits that you earned, the type of system that the university was on, is it semester hours, quarter hours, were there any honors that you received? So there's a, a, a optional field for honors. When the type of degree that you attained, whether bachelor's, master's, PhD, associates, the completion date that you obtained the degree. And then 
there's always a section under education where people like to put certain certifications that they received. So in this box at the bottom of the screen, you can include relevant coursework, any licensures or certifications that you wish to highlight. And you would save the education and move to the next. You can do this for as many times as you wish. And as you start building it, you will see these um, education and work experience fields pop up on your resume. So for this particular candidate, you see that they have a master's degree, you see that they have a bachelor's degree. So if that's all this candidate wished to include, they would click finish and they can go to the next field. Now, one really important feature in USA Jobs that I hope you've all discovered if you've been using it, is there's a searchable feature. So once you've finished your resume, you can go to the, the bottom there, you can see um, underneath the, the view of the document, there's a small box that says searchable. If you click that box, then you will make your resume available to recruiters and human resources specialists who have access to the USA Jobs database to go in and search for candidates that they may want to encourage to apply for their positions. Um, you can only, remember I said you can upload five different resumes, only one of them can be searchable at a time. So you will indicate to the system which resume you want to make searchable. But if you make your resume searchable and your profile is complete, then it will also search your profile as well. Once you've completed the resume, there is a place for you to upload other documents. This is where you could upload transcripts, uh, a cover letter, recommendation letters, any awards or certifications that you would like for people to know about when you apply for jobs. You can store up to 10. So you'll have up to five resumes and up to 10 other documents. Now we're going to talk about how you search for and find jobs. There is a search function at the top of the screen that allows you to put in certain keywords. So you could put in economist or uh, writer, editor, public affairs, administrative officer, whatever you're interested in, you could put that in as a keyword. You could also put in the agency. If you wanted to put in ERS, it would pop up and you could uh, choose the Economic Research Service or the National Institute for Food and Agriculture. And you can also put the location. So um, if you were to put in USDA under keywords and put Kansas City, Missouri under location, you would probably get about 29 different jobs that pop up. So you can do that, you can search on a number of features, um, and I'll show you about hiring paths in just a few minutes that allows you to, to search based on where you are in your career, because that's also a very useful feature. So on this screen, you can see that we, have, we put in the filter of Kansas City, uh, within 25 miles of Kansas City for the Department of Agriculture. And in this particular instance, it brought up 20 jobs. And the very first one there is an agricultural economist with ERS. Uh, it opened on November 4th and it closes on May 15th. The second one is a research agricultural economist that opened on November 5th and closes on May 30th. Then there's an agricultural economist um, that opened in January and closes in July. We're gonna talk about that type of announcement in a minute. It's called an open and continuous announcement. And then there are a number of other jobs listed there. On the search results page, I mentioned that you can filter by other things besides just the keyword and the, the location. There is a feature called hiring path. So let's say that you're interested in all jobs that are open to the public then you would click that first box under hiring path and it brings up all jobs open to the public. So on this particular search of the 20 jobs that it brought up, 12 of them are open to the public. Then you can also tell it other areas that you would like for it to search. If you're a veteran, 
or you're the spouse of a veteran, you can put that in and it will show you all jobs that you qualify for with that um, qualification. Senior executives, people, individuals with disabilities. We had a few questions earlier about Peace Corps and AmeriCorps VISTA volunteers. Um, you can also indicate that status and it will show you opportunities for, um, for that status. So it's a great feature that you can use. Um, I really encourage you to explore the hiring paths. And if you're confused about what the hiring path means, um, USA Jobs has a great um, FAQ section where it will explain every single one of these categories and what it means and what you, uh, what, when you can apply and, and when, when, you, when you can't, right? So when you put in your search, it's gonna bring up jobs and it will arrange your, your results by relevance. That's the default. Um, how relevant is the position to the keywords or the location that you were searching for? You can change that to say that you wanted to bring it up by closing date. So um, if you wanna know every job that's gonna close in the next two or three days, you could sort by closing date and it would rank those first or opening date, the first date that you can apply for a job. You can also sort by agency, department, location, job title, or salary. So lots of features for searching. Once you create a search that you like, that has the filters that, that you're really, that best suit you, you can save that search. And that's a wonderful feature you can save them and name them and you can have multiple searches that you've saved and every time a job gets posted that meets that search criteria it will send you usa jobs will send you an email and you can choose whether you want to receive the emails daily weekly or monthly for the position type the search functions search filters that you've specified it's a wonderful feature and prevents you from having to go into USA Jobs frequently. This shows you more about saving the search feature. In this particular example, we said that we were searching 25 miles from Kansas City and we wanted to be notified daily. So every day you would receive an email of all positions that had been posted in the last 24 hours within 25 miles of Kansas City. A lot of times positions are not open that long. The reason for that, it's not because they already have chosen someone for the position. Um, the main reason is that it's so easy for people to apply online that you can open an announcement and leave it open for five days and receive hundreds of well-qualified applicants. Um, so the idea of leaving your um, having your search notify you every day is a good one because if it's only open for five days and you had your search function tell you to notify you weekly, you could possibly miss out on being able to apply for some positions. And this is just an example of a search function um, and it tells you at the top of your screen, your dashboard, uh, that you have one saved search. So you could have five different saved searches and you can go in and change them and edit them as you need to. Now let's talk about actually submitting an application. Up to this point, we've learned how to use USA Jobs to create a resume, to search for a job, to save your search function. Now let's actually apply for that job. So we found this agricultural economist position and we're interested in applying for it. Um, the first thing you do is save the job to your search because if, if you start the application process and then you wanna go back later, you wanna make sure that you've saved the job announcement so that you can read it. So just be sure to save it. Review it carefully to make sure that you meet the qualifications. We have a lot of folks that apply for jobs online and we call them casual applicants because they don't seem to be very serious about the job in the sense that they haven't read what the requirements for the job are. So make sure that you read and understand what the agency's looking for and 
evaluate for yourself whether you think you have a good shot at it. Um, if it requires a degree and you don't have a degree, then you probably don't need to waste your time and effort applying for it because there is a positive degree requirement. Many of our jobs do not require degrees, um, but they may require certain types of work experience. And so read through that work experience. If you don't feel like you have that work experience, maybe you don't wanna waste your time applying. And if you're in doubt, there's always a way that you can call to verify. And we'll talk about that in a moment. At the beginning of every position, there's an overview. So in this particular case, this tells you the opening and closing dates of the announcement. It opened on November 4th and closes on May 15th. The pay grade is a GS9. It's a permanent position. The salary range for this position starts at $51,853 and uh, the upper end is $67,405. It's a full-time position. It's located in Kansas City, Missouri. And this next uh, field, relocation expenses reimbursed. This is the really important one that tells you whether the employer is gonna pay for you to relocate for the position or whether you have to pay for yourself to relocate. In this case, it says, yes, you may qualify for reimbursement of relocation. And then the, the next field is the eligibility to work from home. In this case, this position is telework eligible and it's determined by agency policy. The U.S. Department of Agriculture's current policy for telework positions that are eligible is up to one day per week. So again, this is the, the full overview section. The location, relocation expenses, telework eligible. Then you get to a section called duties. It starts with a summary of the position and then it tells you the actual responsibilities. And there's, they're usually bulleted and there's four or five key responsibilities. In this case of a ERS economist at the GS9 level, you can see what these responsibilities would be. It also tells you that there would be, that there could be some travel, um, occasional travel involved that you would not be supervising other people. So under supervisory status, it says no. And that there is promotion potential to the GS 13 level. So in the government, um, we have, I guess you could call them a type of pay bands. It's, it's um, uh, grades that tell you uh, the beginning and the upper end of that, that pay for that grade. So a GS9, as I told you earlier, the, the band would be from, I think it was 52,000 to 65,000. Um, if in this case, the position goes from a GS9 up to a GS13. So you can go to um, OPM's website and it has all of the pay grades across the country. And you could look up Kansas City, Missouri and see what does a GS13 make so that you could know that if you were selected for this position, that you would start probably in the upper 50s or lower 50s and then go maybe up to 80, 90, 100,000 per year. So let's talk about the requirements of the position. There are some basic conditions of employment and this we've had a lot of questions about this. So this very first one is you must be a US citizen or US national. So not all positions require that you be a US citizen. So when you're looking at a job announcement, this is where you would be sure to look to see if you're gonna qualify if you don't have citizenship status. This also tells you that if you're a male born after December 31st of 1959, you'll have to register for the selective service, that you're gonna be responsible or uh, required to undergo a background investigation and fingerprint check, that there'll be a one-year probationary period unless you've already served that within the federal government, and then a couple of other things. Um, every job announcement should have those conditions of employment, and you want to check those carefully. Under the qualifications, it tells that in this case, this is an open continuous announcement, and so it's going to tell you that this position stays open, but periodically they're going to review the folks who have applied for it. So in this case, 
It opened in early November, and the first cutoff is Monday, was Monday, November 18th. So that means everybody who applied from the time the position opened until November 18th were going to be considered on the first cutoff. And then it lists the additional cutoff dates, January 2nd, February 12th, March 15th, April 15th, and then there's one more cutoff coming up on May 15th. So it tells you that candidates for the position who submitted a completed application by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time on Monday, November 18th, will be reviewed and referred to the hiring manager if found eligible and qualified. The announcement will remain open until the closing date, and those who apply after the cutoff date will be considered for referral to the hiring manager only if additional vacancies occur and the initial referral list is exhausted. So that's very important when you're looking at open continuous announcements. Um, Usually an agency will put an open continuous announcement if they have a variety of positions that come available throughout the year and they want to be able to um, pull down um, the list of candidates who have applied and review them periodically and that's what the case is here. Um, Dr. Weinberg told you that they have a number of economist positions available and so they've had these, this announcement up for several months and they're pulling down applicants monthly to, to um, make selections, conduct interviews, and try to fill all the vacant positions. Another important point on an open continuous announcement, and Dr. Weinberg referred to this in her presentation, is that sometimes you have to recertify yourself. Applicants must recertify every three months from the date of the application certification to continue to be receive consideration for the position. So if you applied in November, and you're thinking that you're still being considered now, but you haven't gone back in to reapply or to recertify yourself, then that's not the case. Um, and it tells you what the qualifications are. So under basic requirement for this particular position, the very first one says a bachelor's or higher degree in economics that include at least 21 semester hours in economics and three semester hours in statistics, accounting, or calculus. So that's very specific. We've had a lot of questions that have come in about are certain courses required, are certain degrees required. If it's required, the job announcement will tell you, and this is where you would find it under the requirements section. This is just a continuation of the requirements and it talks a little bit about specialized experience and um, education and combinations of experience and education for each position that will vary. So it's really important that you read that and think about um, how that applies in your situation to determine if you're going to be deemed eligible when you apply for the position. It also tells you how you're going to be evaluated. And that's important to read because if you're selected for the position, you need to know what criteria are going to be used. Um, in addition to making sure that you meet the requirements of the position, you may need to submit a writing sample. Um, there may be other criteria that you're going to have to um, submit in order to be evaluated. And then every announcement tells you about the benefits that are offered. And if you're not familiar with federal government benefits, I would really encourage you to click on this link in USA Jobs, and it tells you about different health plans and life insurance plans and dental and vision and thrift savings plan. It's uh, very informative and will really help you decide whether the benefits package that's being offered by the federal government is something that, that appeals to you or whether you would continue to work in the private sector. Every announcement also contains a how to apply section. Um, in this situation, it says that applying online is highly encouraged. We're able to assist you during normal business hours, eight to four, Monday through Friday. If applying online poses a hardship, you can contact the agency contact listed below before the closing date, and they will identify an alternate method for you to apply. Um, the agency contact information listed here is Brandon McNadovich. Brandon is a 
team leader in the Human Resources Division that supports the Economic Research Service team. Um, and if you are reading a job announcement and you're confused about whether you could apply, whether you would qualify or not, you don't understand what some of the terms mean, you can always reach out to the contact who's listed here and they can advise you on how to ascertain if you would qualify or not and what documents you need to provide. Also, if you're having problems with submitting the application through USA Jobs, you may want to contact the person to let them know what problems you're encountering. This section talks about the required documents. Often this is where it would mention transcripts if there's an education requirement and what the process would be for you to submit your transcripts. Once you've read through this and you understand what's required, you can choose to apply. And if you do, you click the, the little button that says apply and it's gonna guide you through the steps of selecting your resume, selecting your documents, reviewing the package, um, and then continuing the application with the agency. This just shows you how to ensure that you've selected the right resume. Review your package, and then once you've reviewed it to make sure you've uploaded the right document, you wanna click I acknowledge at the bottom that this is your resume and your document. And just going back to this previous screen, I think Dr. Weinberg mentioned in her presentation that sometime applicants don't hit all the buttons as they're going through an application. This would be a perfect example. If, if you don't check these boxes and hit save and continue, your application's not moving through the process. This is early enough in the process that you would know because it wouldn't let you advance, but there are times when you, you really need to be careful that you've selected all the right options. Once you've completed this part, you would select on um, continue to the application with the agency, to the agency's website. When you get to the agency's website, sometimes you'll encounter additional requirements, such as a, an assessment questionnaire that needs to be answered. Depending on the type of announcement, sometimes the assessment questionnaire is not required, sometimes it is. Um, but the assessment questionnaire is really where you just um, answer questions related to your qualifications. And it usually gives you a range um, from I have very little experience in that particular area to I'm considered an expert. And when you, what you should keep in mind as you're going through the assessment questionnaire is that your resume and your application materials must support the level of experience and education that you're claiming in the questionnaire. So if you just speed through and click the, the highest one, right, the, the most experienced, the expert on every one of them, but then your resume and your application materials don't support that, then it could be that you're determined to have overstated your qualifications and you could be rated ineligible for the position because they didn't agree. Your, your materials, your resume, and your supporting documents didn't agree with your assessment questionnaire answers. So the best advice is just to be as honest with yourself as possible. Um, I think, Question number three here says, use software including, including Excel and or access to maintain data sets and databases. Well, there's no one better to determine that than yourself. Um, have you had experience with Excel and access and maintaining databases? If so, there are different degrees to which you can select there. Um, I've performed this on the job. Um, I've performed this regularly on the job. And then, you know, I'm an expert in performing this task. People come to me and ask me for help in performing this task. So that helps you determine sort of what your level of expertise is. When you've submitted your application, you will receive status notifications. And some of the possible status notifications include it's received, it's still in progress, it's incomplete, you weren't selected, it's being reviewed, you were referred, it wasn't, you weren't referred, which means you, you, you weren't among the highest qualified for the position, so you were not sent to the hiring manager, you were selected, or you were 
hired or not hired. So you should often check back to see what your application status is. Um, as the application works its way through human resources, these um, statuses will be updated and automatic notifications will be sent to you. We've already talked about the open and continuous announcements and ERS and NIFA both have open and continuous announcements on USA Jobs right now. Um, make sure that you know when the cutoff will be and when the last date to apply is. One other thing to consider is under number three at the bottom where it says um, sometimes an agency will specify a limit on the number of applications that they're gonna receive. So if an agency says that they're gonna open the announcement for five days, but when it gets to 200 applications, it's gonna automatically close. Then let's say that it receives 200 applications at 1.30 in the afternoon, then that day at midnight at 11.59 p.m., the application period would close because they had met the number of applications they were looking for. If there is an application cap, it will say so in the job announcement. So don't be worried that that there's a cap that you don't know about. It will state that there is one in the job announcement. And if you have any questions, USA Jobs has some wonderful help tools. Um, there's lots of frequently asked questions, there's tutorials, there's all kinds of assistance available to you. So we encourage you to, um, to make full use of that. And if that fails and you have no other recourse, then reach out to the contact that's listed on the bottom of the job announcement, and they can certainly provide assistance to you as well. So that's a quick overview of how to apply for a federal job. We hope to receive an application from you for ERS and NIFA positions or any other USDA positions. Uh, my email address there is listed in case you have additional questions that you want to email me about. And then I think now we're gonna go back to Tara and she's going to moderate some questions and answers for me and some of my HR colleagues to help answer. Tara, That's back to you. Thank you very much, Willis. And uh, you did a great job. I think you answered many of the questions that we had in our uh, queue, but I just wanna remind everyone to submit questions to the Q&A uh, feature at the bottom of your screen. And that even the questions that don't get answered live, we will respond to those uh, through the FAQ and the transcript. So please continue to submit your questions. All right, so I will have just a couple for you. Willis, and then, like I said, we can circle back later. Okay. Um, how long after a position closes does it take to hear back? So as we mentioned, um, once the position closes, there are things that human resources is going to be doing on the back end. They will immediately start reviewing the qualifications of all of the applicants, and then they will produce a certificate that they will send to the hiring manager that tells the hiring manager who was qualified and who they can consider. That's what they call being referred to the hiring manager. Um, as that certificate is put together and sent to the hiring manager, an automatic notification will go back to the candidates who applied telling them that they were referred or not referred to the hiring manager. And I would say that that process usually takes no more than about two weeks. So I would think after a position has closed, your first contact would be um, saying that the application was received by human resources, and then a couple weeks later saying that you were either referred to the hiring manager or were not referred. Great, thank you. Okay, here's one. If we go through the build resume process and later apply for a job by uploading a resume, is the resume created through the resume builder still reviewed as part of our application process as well as the uploaded resume? So when you apply for each job, the system will prompt you for which document you wish to use. So if you have five different resumes, let's say four resumes that you uploaded and one that you built in USA Jobs, you can tell it which one you wish to use every time you apply. Um, you can change them each time you apply. It doesn't have to be the same one. Okay, great. All right, and I think we have time for just a couple of more. And, um, oh, here's a good one. 
if we come from academia, can we submit a CV instead of a resume? Yes, you can definitely submit a CV. Um, I do recommend, though, that you remember that the federal resume requires a lot of information that may or may not be included in your CV. So even if you're submitting a CV, you may still want to use the resume builder uh, because um, it just may make ensure that you meet all the fields that are required in the federal resume. Okay, and I will ask maybe one more. Should applicants with non-competitive eligibility use a different process to apply to USDA? So you have competitive status and non-competitive status. Maybe explain what, what the difference is. Um, I'm gonna to refer to my colleague, Rosita Spears. She's the deputy director and I'll let her walk through the competitive and non-competitive process because I think she uh, will do a better job of that than I will. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. So the competitive service is basically um, for individuals that are applying to federal jobs and once you get into the federal service or you get selected for a federal position, you get in, now you have federal um, competitive status. What that means is that if you went to apply for other um, internal federal positions, um, you would only be competing against other federal employees. So you wouldn't be competing against anyone from the outside. Non-competitive um, right now, probably for much of the people that are on um, this virtual uh, session may have non-competitive or are non-competitive because you haven't applied to a federal position as of yet. So you would essentially be applying with everybody else that's outside of the federal government. There are other non-competitive type of appointments. We have um, veterans appointments, appointments um, for persons with disabilities, and those kind of appointments, you still submit um, an application of sort, but again, you're applying with um, individuals that are in the same type of category. So other veterans, other persons with disabilities. And so um, you could apply um, alongside the internal federal um, sector folks. It's a complicated sort of process, um, but um, hopefully that helps some. If not, please send me or Willis, um, or Willis an uh, email and we'll try to explain it a little more thoroughly for you. Thank you. All right, one last question. Uh, Regarding the 80-day period for application decisions, does this start after a job closes or from the time you submit your application? So the 80-day hiring timeline is a goal. It's a target for agencies. Depending on the type of position, it could, it could be much longer than 80 days. Um, depends on how many people apply, how long it takes to review the qualifications for the position. Uh, when you send the when, when Human Resources sends the list of qualified applicants to the hiring manager, are they available immediately to start conducting interviews? Sometimes hiring managers are traveling, maybe they're in conferences or whatnot. So there are a lot of reasons why you may not meet that 80 days. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't start a, a clock and say, okay, I applied at this point, I haven't heard back yet. Do be patient, you should be receiving the notifications from human resources as the application is making its way through the system. If it has been an exceptional period of time and you haven't heard anything, you can always reach out to the contact on the bottom of the job announcement and they can update you on the status. Um, but it's, it's really hard to say how long you should wait before hearing back. It really depends on a lot of factors and those automatic notifications are being sent, so you should be receiving something. If not, then you definitely need to check because something's wrong if you're not receiving any of the automatic touch points. Thank you very much. So we are out of time. Uh, what a great session. Thank you to all of our presenters and their teams for helping respond to the questions, and thank you for the team behind the scenes that have been responding to the questions in the Q&A. Uh, remember that we will have a transcript that will be posted to the website, and we will also be responding to the Q&As that we did not get to during this session. Uh, I think with that, Michelle, I'll turn it over to you, or are we done?
Um, no, thank you so much, Tara, for helping to moderate. Really appreciate it and appreciate all of our presenters today. Um, in addition to the um, transcript and the recording being posted on the website, we'll also, um, we had a few questions about the breakout sessions and those are being held uh, tomorrow and Thursday. Um, we will be sending email invitations out to anyone that signed up for a breakout session. And if you've already signed up, but you heard um, something that makes your made you interested in another session, please go back in and register for that. We'll be sending those invitations out later this evening and first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, if you give me just a sec, I will share the breakout slide for everyone to take a quick look at. I think, there we go. All right. Yeah, so um, again, thanks to everybody that joined today and to all of our presenters, we really appreciate it. Thanks everyone, have a wonderful evening. Are we still in broadcast mode? Yes, the attendees can hear us that are leaving now. All right, I think we've got everyone's out. So all that's left is Michelle and Willis. <laughs>
I know everybody else bailed before we got to this point, right? Maybe they didn't know that we were going to hang around, but um, I know. Yeah, I didn't tell anybody to do that. Willis, thank goodness thank we thank goodness we had the backup plan. We needed it. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, I was um, very grateful that we did that. <laughs> yes, I would. I never expected we were going to need it. I'm so thankful we had already planned for it. So. Yeah, I agree. Um, good job. Um, we were chatting um, offline.